Yeah, you missed it, Juan. The whole first 45 minutes, it it didn't save. So I'm gonna have to go back and retape that. But taking this from the top, inside of a playground, we're creating a class that's called depth calculator. We're creating three variables. Since we are creating those three variables at the top of the program, and since they're not in any method or init, all right, they are global to this file. They don't have to be passed. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm not saying they're never passed, but I'm saying they don't have to be passed. They're known all over the place, in other words. All right? So, three doubles. Our total of our bill, whatever our tax percentage is, and we'll multiply one by the other to get our subtotal. All right? This is the equivalent, again, to our constructor. Right there. That's the equivalent to a constructor. So we're going to be passing in, and you know, this is, I think, Luke, this is where you asked this before. Maybe it wasn't you, but again, when you look at this, so when you start to go through everything, that total, that 3325, that's this. That's this. All right, that's the total. That 006. And what I like about this, and I, I you know it's smaller, but now you can see everything. I think that's why the first example they put in here was something that would fit on the screen. So you can see all of it. So this is again the equivalent of our constructor. Then we come down here and we calculate the tip with the tip for percentage. So we again we grab that subtotal, uh, thirty-three twenty-five, and we multiply it by the tip percentage, six percent. All right, that would be our subtotal, right? So again, if our bill happened to be fifty dollars and the tax was five percent, it'd be two dollars and fifty cents. That kind of thing. All right. Then we print the possible tips. All right, and I don't know where that is in here. Oh, that, that's this, that, this, that's what we're doing here, is we're printing. So we're saying print it out if it had a 15% tip, and if it had an 18% tip, and if it had a 20% tip. The thing to realize is when we do this, we multiply it, we're using that total for all three of these. Does that make sense? Because we're assuming that it's, that's the bill and that's the tax. All right, with $33, that's going to be approximately two bucks. All right, let's just pretend that when we multiply this to make it simple, it was exactly two dollars. Okay. So we want to be able to calculate the tip, and we want to be able to do it at 15%, at 18%, and at 20%. What you're going to see in the next part of this is they keep working with this. And it's very similar, what I liked about this one, is it's very similar to something that we did last semester. All right, but you really start to see just how quirky this language is, because eventually what we'll want to do is we'll want to build an interface for this and we'll want a slider for the percent. All right, and when we want, the, technically we could have a slider for both the percent and for our bill total if we wanted to do that. All right, but they have you just do it with a percent. All right, and they want the slider, they want the number that goes in there to be an int. So you've got to keep converting things back and forth between ints and doubles. All right, and I, I really think, you know, I'm, I'm starting to rec realize why this guy is doing things the way he's doing it. Just to show you, in order for it to be type safe, how you have to do things and how they have to be set up in a certain way. So again, when we got all done, what I can come back to it. But when we get all done, ideally what's going to happen is this is what you saw. And hopefully everybody who completed it, this is what they saw. All right? Now, I, and I, I'm telling you this, I'm not picking on her, but I want to tell you, because if you notice, John came over here a couple times, what Holly had done, and it, anybody can do this, is in her init, instead of putting her ending curly right there, she put it down here. So everything was inside of her init routine. I didn't see it. John didn't see it. I started removing stuff. I told her to type something in again. Everything she typed in was fine, except she misplaced one curly. So you see how easy it is, all right? Even if you've got code that you're working with, it just takes one little thing to, to, to trip you up, all right? Now, what we could have done there, and what might have made it easier is we could have come in here and we could have written just like one routine 
and you know, and then then initiated it, for example. Just done this, like that, and then put it here, and then printed out the actual values. See what I'm saying? That might have made it easier rather than typing in everything. So we could have just put in this line here, and not even this line that says calculate, not even do that yet. Just do it the first line. Then inside of here, you can put a print in any one of these we want to. And it's a really nice debugging tool. All right. And you can use that in an application as well as in a playground. So you can put that into a regular file. Just like in Java last semester when we were working with Eclipse, you could still do a system.out.print line. Even if you were doing message dialogue, so you could print stuff on, on, on the console area. That's exactly what we're doing right here. So again, ideally, you got it to work, you put it all in, and what we're, we're not worried about it right now, but we're going to eventually have to fix this. All right? A couple things, just so you see this. I have had my programs not work already by not putting a blank space before the backslash. I've also done it, and it's worked. So if there's one thing about this editor, it's very unpredictable in a lot of ways or the IDE, I should say, Xcode, period. Because I've done the same thing and had it both work and not work. I don't understand that. It, typically, that's not the way things do work, by working sometimes and not working other times. All right, other thing, be real leery. There is an open curly there. I'm sorry, I, 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 well, there's a, uh, a, a double quote there. And there's the ending double quote. Make sure we've got what? One, two, three. One, two, three. It's easy to miss. All right, it's easy to miss that. And if you look in here, notice that this one's red and the other one isn't. The reason for that is the red one is part of the string. The other one is part of where you're printing out the actual interpolated value of the variable. All right? And I don't know, my, my color coding is pretty much like this, and that yours may or may not be. I just noticed that my, I didn't notice that until John just mentioned it. The co color coding for different stuff on my machine is different than yours. I never changed mine. But you guys, what is this? These are MacBook Airs? Yeah. Mine's just a MacBook. All right. And I found it online and it was fairly cheap. All right. But the other thing I want you to realize too is this is all part of the class. So after we create the class, then we have to create an object that's part of the class. And when we create it, because right now, this is calling the init right here. And the init that we wrote expects a double and a double. Remember, we could have overrode. So we could have, if we wanted to, we could have come in here, just so you see this. We could have come in here, and as an example where this init is, we could have written our own init. So we could have just said here, init, and I'm sure the colors are going to be wrong, yeah, and just put in paren paren and then done something like this. That we wouldn't have needed the word self, we could have just said total equals 100. Uh, tax percentage equals 10. All right, something like that. We still could have put this same line that you see right here. That would have worked just fine. But we could have done something like that. And the reason I'm telling you that, I'll take your question in a second, but I know that the colors are screwed up on here. Sorry about that. But what I'm trying to show you, though, is if we had done that, then we could have had another line in here that said, let's make it, let's let tip calc 2 equal tip calculator, and then like that. Does that make sense to everyone? You have to start understanding this stuff. I will tell you, I can guarantee you that if you go in for a job interview as a programmer, that sooner or later, somebody will ask you a question where, where, where you know, if, if you said that you didn't understand that, they would be floored. That's enough to basically not get you a job. All right? There's a person who graduated from here. I'm amending the story, John. There's a person who graduated from here that went in for a job interview fairly recently. When that person went in for a job interview, they were asked some basic questions about object-oriented programming. 
the person's response was, we didn't go over that stuff. I had to, this is the first time I ever talked to an employer where I started to say bull and I had to catch myself. Because that, that sure as heck is not true. But, it, you know, even something as simple as if somebody said, well, what are you doing right here? And you said, we're creating a tip calculator object. And in this case, we're calling the init or constructor routine. We're calling the second one that expects two double parameters. And in this one, we're calling the first init, which expects no parameters. All right? Because if you're talking to somebody, you may end up talking to a boss. If, you know, the funny thing is people tell me, God, I hate, I hate interviewing with HR people. The great thing about HR people by and large, they're idiots. I mean, I'm not saying the people who work here are idiots. I'm not. What I mean is they're idiots about programming. You could be throwing bull at them, and they don't have any idea whether it's right or it's wrong. But if you go, that might be a first interview, but if you go again, there will be somebody technical who will be interviewing you that might just keep shooting questions at you. Not only that, depending on the type of job you're going for, they might actually pose questions to you they know are wrong to see if you react, at least that you roll your eyes or you're going like this or whatever. All right? That stuff happens all the time. All right. Is there anything in here? I don't know if I answered your question or not, Zane, but are there any questions on what's going on in this program? Yes, sir. Okay. The question was, what if we put this in? The answer is, we would have had two of these. They would have been different amounts because one was $33.25 and one was $100. All right. Now, again, what, what I've been doing with the first-year people in the Java class, what we did in the first class is we built a, a simple payroll app. All right. We hard-coded in my first name, or they could put theirs in, last name, uh, an amount for the hours worked, an amount for the hourly rate. And I said, what's wrong with this? And I don't know if anybody answered that question when I asked it or not. But eventually, either I said it or somebody came up with, well, every time you run it, it says the same thing. That's the problem with this program in its current format. Every time you run it, since you're hard coding in, right there, since you're hard coding in 3325 and 0.06, even with the other one, if you did the other one, you're still going to get the same results every time. You're, you're probably not going to have a lot of people who are going to want to buy that tip calculator. It's not a joke. I mean, you just won't. Why, why would you want that? Well, that's okay. As long as every time I go out to eat, it's going to be this amount. Then you'd be okay. And you're always going to tip 6%, which, which to most waitresses and waiters would mean you're a cheapskate. All right. So let's just finish up this one right here. All right. They talk about arrays. We've talked about arrays before. A couple things about arrays. Okay. This could have been, re so you could have replaced this. So, in other words, for the print possible tips, what we could have done is we could have set up an array with 15%, 18%, and 20%. And these two lines are identical. These two lines. You say, no, they're not. They're identical, but the first one, as it says there, is inferred. The second one is explicit. When you see the word explicit, you are putting it in. You're not letting the compiler figure anything out. When it says inferred, you're letting the compiler figure it out. Again, because of compiler optimization, Apple is recommending that for Swift, you use the inferred method. But some people just, they just can't wrap their arms around that. They still want to put a type in there. You can do it. The idea is if you're writing an app that's thousands of lines long, over time, you might notice it's a little slower running that way. That's all. Question, or are you just scratching? No, I'm just scratching. Okay. All right. If we had done this, and if we had used an array, then what we could have done is we could have written a for loop and done it like that instead of having those three print lines. Again, these are the kind of things as programmers you're going to be expected to know. I mean, and, and if, if, you, if you said when you looked at this, well, this is kind of stupid the way it was printed like this. You know, couldn't we have just, you know, couldn't we have made some changes in here and just, 
you know, we got three print statements. Couldn't we have just called print once and put it in a loop? And you might think, well, you know, in this case, what, three lines? And if we did all that stuff, it'd still be one, two, three, four lines. You say, wait a minute, now, now it's more code. But what if I wanted to print every value, for example, between 15% and 30%? So I had 15 or 16 values. Now I've got 15 or 16 print statements versus one print statement in a loop. All right? You should always be thinking about that as you're writing code in any language. How can I optimize this? How can I make it easier? And you may remember this because I've been telling the first year people now. In your first year here, code for readability and understandability for you. All right? In the second year, it changes. Why? Because you're coding to try to get a job. And I'll tell you that if you, sit, if you did something like this, especially if there were 10 of these, let's just say you want a 10%, 20%, all the way to 100, and you showed that to an employer, my first thought is I'm sitting there, I might not even say it to you, but my th first thought is, why the heck didn't you put that in a loop? I'm going to think that right away. We talked a little bit about this last time. Remember this thing right here? That's one part of the range operator. So if you say, and you can't have spaces in here, because again, it gets weird when you do that. Zero, dot, dot, less than, it does a count of how many elements you have. So it says go to zero to one less than that element, okay? If we wanted to include that element, let's just say we did, pretend for a second we did. Then we'd say, instead of dot, dot, less than, dot, dot, dot. That means include it. So if I say zero dot dot less than 10, it's going to go zero through nine. If I say zero dot 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 10, it will include 10. All right, that's the range operator. You go, well, I don't like that. Then don't use it. I love that when people say, I don't like that. If it confuses you, you shouldn't use it. All right. I think if you saw the code that went into some of, even like your, your, your special Flappy Bird clone, I'll, I'll make you a bet that's thousands of lines. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. All right. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if it, it was up there closer to a million lines mm -hmm. with some of these, some of these apps. Because they're trying to account for everything. They want you to buy it. They want you to think how cool it is. Why? Because you'll tell your friends. All right. This is what I mentioned before, just so you see this. All right, that if you say for this and you say print inside of here, this is what's going to show right there on, in, in, in Playground. But over here, you can't see it unless you put your mouse over it. There's like a little eye. Literally, it looks like a bad human eye. And if you click on the eye, then it'll expand that and show everything. But if you put print, it'll always show it in the console area as long as the console area is open and you know how to open and close the console area. And if you say, that, that, Jeff, this is all fine, why did you even have us do this? Because again, I wanted to show you that so many people, even with a program that isn't big, this is not a large program, that people tend to, even if it's 50 lines, they type and they type and they type and they type, and then they haven't even tried testing it yet, but then they start looking along the side for stuff in red, all right? Whereas if you type part of it, and then you run it and test it, type a little more, then you run it and test it, you're so much better off. All right? The last thing that they discuss in here is they talk about dictionaries. In this lesson here, this tutorial, they're going to talk about dictionaries. In the next one, they're going to talk, maybe it's the third one, I don't remember, they're going to talk about tuples. All right? And if you don't know what they are, don't worry, because we're going to start going over them now. All right. It says, let's make one last change to the tip calculator. Rather than printing out the tips, you could return a dictionary with the results instead. All right. So let's just talk about how it changes. First change you see is here. In a dictionary, in many ways, is a lot like an array. All right. So what you're saying is, what I'm returning here are a whole bunch of doubles. Okay. And then we set up the array. This, and it looks really weird. var retval equal bracket int colon double co um, bracket 
paren paren. All right. The reason that you have this here, this paren paren, is when you set up a dictionary, you can give it a size in there. And that's what goes in the parentheses. If you put nothing in the parens, it says use the default size. But that's just the way that it wrote that this is written. All right. So it looks weird because this is, this is creating basically an empty dictionary right there. There's nothing in it. Why? So you can fill it up in here. All right. It says you'll get an error, but they'll fix that in a moment. And again, that's the other thing. If you do go and key it a little bit and then test, key in a little bit and test, the other thing you're going to find, too, is you're going to, you're going to find more errors. All right? But a lot of times what it is is you've already done something and you did it wrong. All right? By testing, even going on a little bit and doing a little more, more and then testing it. And use good test values. I probably have told you about this before. I always remember this. I asked students, you know, I, I knocked it down to 25 because of a student. But I used to always have students in almost every class. You had to generate an array with, in fact, for a while, rather than generating the array, I had them create an array by hand, okay? And just, just for the hell of it, I asked it to be 100, have 100 elements in it, okay? And I watched this person, the first time they wrote their program, they were keying in 100 different elements, as opposed to taking the array and, like, checking an array of size 5 and getting it to work and then maybe 10, et cetera. I said, what are you doing? And they told, I knew, I mean, I knew what they were doing. Right. But when you test, test with reasonable values. I watched a person once, and they, they, you, they were a math person. So I said, what are you using for your test values? Pi. Wow, that's kind of stupid. You know, it was a payroll program. I don't know of anybody who makes pi for their payroll, you know. So this is what it's going to end up looking like there. It looks pretty much the same. Now, if you had any problems whatsoever. All right. Again, this tutorial, as I mentioned to you earlier, this is out there on the system. All right. So it's under, it's under right here. You don't have to turn this in. I wanted people to get practice getting back into the swing of things, so to speak. So it's right there in that particular folder. If you go into that folder, parts one and two and three are all in there. You all now have a hard copy also, all right? But as they mentioned at the end of the hard copy, they give you the final playground file. I didn't do that. I didn't just didn't copy that stuff over, but you can if you want to. So if you do work on this and you say, well, I don't understand, theirs works and mine doesn't, then copy theirs over and print it out and look at it, all right? When it says the final one, that's the one with the dictionary. Put in. I ran through and did this entire tutorial. All right, on here, on my my playground, I would I, I call it like part one, part two, and part three. I didn't remove anything, but when they said change something, I commented it out, the first one, and I put the new stuff in there. All right. So what I'd like to do next time, unless people have a problem with this is go over just the second one. I'm not going to go over the third one. But in the second one, what they do, you've already got a lot of the code written. All right? So they have you create a single view application. You won't know how to do all that stuff already. They say set the, the phone up to an iPhone 6S. That really doesn't matter. Run it where you get nothing there. All right? Then they go through and they ask you to start, you know, copying some stuff over, changing some stuff over, et cetera. They explain some stuff here. I don't want to go over it now. It's just going to take too long. But that's how you do a getter. Remember getters and setters from Java? There's a getter. There's a setter. You don't need a setter in this program. They show you how to create one, but you don't need it. All right? And then they have you copy everything in. And when you look at this, this pretty much is the program you now have. But the only thing that's different is, again, they came in there and they used the dictionary and then inside of here, where they set up subtotal, they set it up as a getter. We'll look at that next time, but I don't want to spend much time on it. Why? I want us to get down to this section, where they talk about storyboards. And you say, well, I know the story. Yeah, I know you understand storyboards. But they, they explain all of the different stuff that's in here. Everything that's in here has a number on it, and they explain everything. All right? And then they have you come through 
and start changing things. Okay? One of the things that they have you do, just so you know, remember down, down here? Where is it? Down here where we have all of our different, uh, all of our different widgets. All right? There's another way that you can make the keyboard go away. Okay? And they show that in here. They also do this. They're hard coding values in there to make sure that when you create this, all this stuff lines up. All right? And it's important that you at least see that it can be done like that. So when you get all done, that's your interface when you're at that point. So you can, you know, you click in here. I think they keep 3325 as the default value to start with and 6% here. You click calculate. And this, this number that's right here where it says tax 0%, whatever the number that you have here with the uh, slider, that's the number that gets put in here. All right? And it figures it out, and it gives you one answer. Why? Because I, I think maybe it still gives you all three. I don't remember. But the point is, then they go over and they talk about view controllers. All right? And they mention, this is the way I don't like doing this. All right? Remember how I've, I had you, for example, you got a button on your screen. All right, so this is your screen. There's a button. Calculate. All right, so you go in, you bring up that, you click that button, and you bring up your assistant editor. So this is code. All right, remember how we would take and hold down on the control? And when we hold down on the control, we would hold down on the mouse pad, and we move up over here, we click, and it would bring up that dialogue and ask us to name something. All right, that's the way I think is the easiest way to do it. But they tell you, if you don't want to do that, you can just type it in. You can't. Just type it in. But then what you have to do after you've typed it in is you have to go over where you've got all those, those six different things, the attributes inspector and all those other things. The last one, which we haven't really done anything with, is called the connections inspector. And if you click that one, it'll show a little dot for all the things where you can add stuff. And then they, what they have you do is they have you click on the right dot and then take that and drag that back to here. And it does the same thing. So they show you two ways of doing it. All right? I screwed up my program because I, I used that way. And when I screwed it up, I forgot that just if you, if you remove it here, it doesn't technically remove it from over here. So mine was wrong. Mine wasn't working, and I couldn't figure out why. All right? So I think there's value to doing this. All right? And so, but I'd like to try to get as much done on Tuesday's class as we possibly can. So Thursday, we'll start from scratch, and we'll build... I don't know, a BMI calculator or something like that as a class, all right? And we'll just go through all the steps. That way, those of you who get it, you can go on, you can, you can start playing with colors and play with fonts and whatever the heck you want to play with, all right? We'll build that as a class, but we'll build it and make it pretty butt ugly. In other words, if it's, if it's a BMI calculator, it'll look like this. There'll be a label, there'll be like a text field, there'll be a label, There'll be a text field, all right? And this will probably say height. This will say weight. There'll be a button here that'll say, like, calculate, okay? And then there'll be another text field here that'll give you your BMI type of thing, okay? It's not hard to do. There's not much code, okay? So you come in here, you say, you know, you got the height. It would be in inches. You say 70. You got the weight. You say 100 pounds. And it'll come back and say your BMI is... 17.68, you know, whatever, boom, boom, type of an idea. All right? Then what I'll ask you to do is to first get that to work and then go back and redo it. And I'll give you an interface that will have, like, one or two sliders in it so you can get used to doing that. You'll already have the code, so it won't be a lot of work. We're going to do a lot, well, as in the start of this class, at least a lot of small projects, all right, and to try to get these ideas through to everybody. All right. We should all go home now. <clears throat>